Hi boys and girls, welcome back. Today's riddle is, are you ready for it? I can sparkle, I can run, I can fall, and I can help clean. What am I? Think about it. Today's read is called, We Are the Water Protectors. It's a beautiful book written by Carol Lindstrom and illustrated by Michael Goad. It's an interesting story. I might have some trouble pronouncing some of the Indian names. I hope not. But Water is the first medicine, Nokomis told me. Look how beautiful the pictures are. Oh, makes me want to paint something beautiful. It nourished us inside our mother's. We come from water. It nourished us inside our mother's body as it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. The river's rhythm runs through my veins, runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land. What do you think the black snake might be? It's a metaphor, it's not really a black snake, but it's something that's kind of evil in their minds. Spoil the water, poison plants and animals, wreck everything in its path. Here's a clue. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many, many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land, courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. What is that black snake? Take courage, I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally people together. <clears throat> to stand for the water, to stand for the land, to stand as one against the black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums. We stand here. It will not be easy. Kind of a scary picture right there, isn't it? <clears throat> we fight for those who cannot fight for themselves, the winged ones, the crawling ones. It's a beautiful picture of nature there. The four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, the trees, rivers, and lakes. The earth, we are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down Tracks down my face, tracks down my people's faces. Water has its own spirit, Nokomis told me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are the stewards of the earth, for our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. We stand. The black snake is in for a fight of its life. Protect the snake. So this is them protesting the black snake, which is oil. Now more on water protectors. In Ojibwe culture, women are the protectors of water and men are the protectors of fire. 
Perhaps it is more that reason that I felt compelled to speak for the water through this story. Humans have always been mistreating Mother Earth for millennia, and indigenous peoples have long acted as stewards of the planet, giving a voice to our silent home. There is an Anishinaabe prophecy that speaks of two roads. One road is a natural path. It leads to global peace and unity that embraces the sacred relationship between humanity and all living things. On this path, all orders of creation, mineral, plant, animal, and human are relatives deserving respect and care. We are instructed to use our voices to speak for those who have not been given a voice. On this path, there is no black snake. The earth is not damaged and the grass grows lush and green. The prophecy is known as the seven fires prophecy, that if humans choose the natural path, then we will proceed towards peace and unity and a healthy mother earth. The prophecy known as the seven fires prophecy says that those humans, okay, the other road is described as a hard surfaced highway where everything moves faster and faster at an unimaginable speed. On this path, humans embrace technological advancement with little regard for Mother Earth. Many native nations believe this path is symbolized by oil pipelines that black snakes crisscross our lands, bringing destruction and harm. The path leads to a damaged Earth. The prophecy is coming to life right before our eyes. This book was created as I became increasingly aware of the many tribal nations that are fighting oil pot pipelines from crossing their tribal lands and waterways. In April 2016, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe stood up against the titans of industry to protect the region's water and sacred burial grounds from one of those oil pipelines, the Dakota Access Pipeline. Although the tribes and residents are often told these pop pipelines are safe, there are countless oil leaks every year across the world. These leaks, leaks cause tremendous damage and destruction to plants, wildlife, and water. What started out as a camp made up of a few tribal members near Cannonball River in Fort Yates, North Dakota, would eventually grow into a movement that would bring together more than 500 indigenous nations from all over the world to stand for clean water. Seeing reports of the protests had a profound effect on me. I'm a citizen of Turtle Mountain Band of Ojibwe Tribe, also located in Nor North Dakota. While other members of my tribe traveled to Standing Rock to lend their support, traveling to North Dakota from my home in Maryland wasn't possible for me at the time. But I knew what was, using my voice to tell a story, a story to honor the Standing Rock water protectors and share this historical movement with the world. Sadly, despite fierce protests and construction of the, the, dis, construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline moved forward with no assurances to Standing Rock, Sioux tribe that their pipeline wouldn't leak and water sources would be safe from contamination. Unfortunately, there were leaks in the Dakota Access Pipeline before the construction was even complete. Like the Standing Rock Sioux, many tribes and their allies continue to fight pipelines on a daily basis. This is not just a Native American issue, it is a humanitarian issue. It is time that we all become stewards of our planet so we can protect it for our children and our children's children. Water connects us all. We must fight to protect it. I have hope that the next generation, you, will continue to see the importance of preserving our precious planet by pledging to be a water protector with me. And that's from Carol. Interesting, wasn't it? So she based this on her history and a true story. Now I have a fun experiment to do with water. I've never done this one before. I hope it works. You're gonna do it along with me and we'll see what happens. Oh, the answer to the riddle. I hope you figured it out. I sparkle, I run, I fall, and I help clean. What am I? Water. Okay, I miss you, I love you. I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, boys and girls, are you ready for our experiment? Today's experiment, we're gonna make edible water bottles. Well, they're more like little small bottles, but it's gonna be fun. I've never done this before, but we're gonna try. For this experiment, I had to order some stuff online. I don't think most of you will have it. I needed some calcium lactate, which is edible. It's a form of calcium. And some sodium alginate or alginate. It's like powdered seaweed. You'll also need five and a half cups of water an immersion blender, and some spoons, some measuring spoons, measuring cups, and some bowls. You ready to get started? Okay, I'm gonna put my hair up, then I'm gonna point the camera down to see what we're doing. Okay, boys and girls, the first thing we need to do, and look, I got some of the dough from the other day on my jacket. I need to wash it. 
is we're going to mix a half a teaspoon of the sodium alginate or alginate. I need to learn how to pronounce that in a bowl with one and a half cups water. I have my one and a half cups already measured out. I'm going to pour it in. And then take your immersion blender and mix it. Let's see what happens. When it's fully mixed, it'll look cloudy. I still see some pieces on the bottom. Get this out. Okay, that looks pretty cloudy. Now the directions, I have a cookbook here. That's why I'm using it. Say to let it sit for 15 minutes till it doesn't look cloudy. I'll be back in 15 minutes. Okay, the water's all mixed, nice and clear. It's been 15 minutes. Our next step is to pour four cups of water into a larger bowl. This is where the excitement happens. And then mix two teaspoons of calcium lactate. Okay, I have my measuring spoon one two one and two <clears throat> and then it says to I'm reading from my kids cookbook um, says to mix it until it's completely dissolved so I'm mixing it dissolved means you can't see it anymore Still mixed, still needs to be mixed. I see particles of it, keep stirring. <clears throat> it's kind of like putting salt or sugar into water so you can see it and then it becomes part of the water. So I'll have calcium water when it's all ready. Let's see, uh, still a few more pieces, a little more mixing. I can tell you I'm getting excited. I wanna see what's going to happen. How about you guys? And it looks like it's all dissolved. Do, do you see any little pieces? I don't. Looks clear to me, except for the bubble floating at the top. Oh, maybe a few little pieces. Okay. Now, it says, take a lower tablespoon, take a tablespoon of the calcium alginate right here. And here's a tablespoon. I'm going to carefully lower it in to the calcium lactate bath. Okay, now it says it's going to start gelling around the edges and cause a kind of chemical reaction. I'm gonna turn it over. Hmm. Now, the trouble is I can't see. Let me see if it happened. Nope, nothing happened. Okay, let me try again. Uh, it says, in one of the large mixing bowls, okay. Now gently lower a tablespoon of the sodium alginate mixture. Here it is. Now, okay, I have to wait for the water to firm around the edges. I'm not sure how I'm gonna be able to tell that, but I'm gonna hold it and wait and see. Do -do, do -do -do. If it takes too long, I'll just pause it and come back when it's ready. Science isn't always perfect. It's about the adventure, and I'm sure having an adventure trying this. If it works, I might try it with other liquids. Maybe I'll do it with some juice, see what it tries out, turns out to be. Oh, I think I see it. Oh, it's starting to harden. Now I turn it over, okay? Gently turn it over. Uh-oh. Uh, oh. Oh. Okay. Well, it turned into some slime here. Ooh. Okay. 
have to put it in there. I think I have to wait a little bit longer. Let me make sure. I'm gonna be back, I'm gonna get a slotted spoon. Okay, now this is why it's important to really read the directions. It said I could take it out with my hands or use a slotted spoon. I used my hands, I couldn't find it. Then I took a slotted spoon and look. Here is my water. I'm gonna put it in cold water, let it harden. Let's try it again. Okay. One tablespoon. Put it in until the sides start to get hard or firm. Now see if I look here real carefully, I can see the sides are starting to get firm. I'm gonna turn it over gently. And take my slotted spoon and see what happens. If I can find it. Oh, this one turned into a lot of pieces. <laughs> Maybe I need to let it wait longer. This is the fun of science. I'm gonna make a few more and I'll be back. Okay, now I'm all done making them. What I'm gonna do so you can see them is pour them from one bowl into another because you're supposed to pour them in cold water after they're done. And hopefully they'll all be in here and then I'll try them and see how refreshing they are. Okay. Let's see. Ooh. Okay, ready? I'm gonna drink my water now. Mmm. <laughs> Yummy, pretty good. Here's another couple. Mm, I can actually eat my water. Okay, I had some fun making this and it turned out, some of it turned out slimy like this, but. <laughs> A little gooey too. I can still drink my water. These chemicals are just like seaweed and calcium. Yummy, and I learned some fun stuff about chemical reactions. The seaweed and the calcium react and form a gel shell. I learned that you can't leave it in too long or they become really gummy. So I had fun. Miss you. See you guys soon. Bye.